Hello YouTube! Welcome to episode 12 in my Digital Aquarium Controller series. Today we're going to look at using the DS1307 real-time clock with Adreno, and how I use it to schedule events in the controller code. I covered some of this back in episode 2 for my prototype light. However, here I'll get into greater depth and I'll show some additional changes. First, why use a real-time clock, abbreviated as RTC? After all, there are several ways to implement timed operations using Adreno libraries in a standard oscillator. Well, the RTC is just better. It's more accurate, easier to implement, and can track time over days, months, even years, where it becomes cumbersome to go beyond just a few hours with the built-in Adreno timer methods. Also, with a small 3-volt button cell battery, the RTC can stay accurate even after power loss, or rebooting the Adreno. For a few extra dollars that I might add to the project cost, most of the time it's well worth it. If working with the bare chip, you'll need just a few extra components such as a 32.768 kHz crystal and two 1K resistors. That's basically it. Optional, but recommended, is the CR2032's coin cell battery and the battery holder. For the 8-pin dip, the circuit's simple. The crystal goes between pins 1 and 2 of the chip. Ground goes to pin 4, 5V DC to pin 8. A 1K pull-up resistor goes between pin 6 and the 5V DC, and the same for pin 5 and 5V. Then, if you have a battery, its positive goes to pin 3 and the negative goes to ground on pin 4. Pin 5 is SDA. It connects to the SDA on the Adreno, which is pin 20 on the Mega. On my Uno, it's just marked SDA, but I've seen others using an analog pin 4 and A5 for SCL. Pin 6 is SCL on the chip, pin 21 on the Mega. Alternatively, you can find this tiny I2C RTC module on eBay for just a dollar or two. I'll put a search link in the description. It comes with a nice compact package, about an inch square, with an additional I2C EEPROM and a place to add a DS18B20 temperature sensor. Usually the battery is even included, but if not, the battery holder is for sure. This is the module I'll be using. It connects to the Adreno in the same way. You just have no extra components to worry about. Note that if you add the DS18B20 one wire thermometer, Connect the DS pin to the same Adreno pin as the other one wire bus items, or your other thermometers. There are several libraries for using the DS1307 and other compatible RTC chips. I'm using the DS1307 New library. I originally found it at DF Robot. There's a link in the description. However, if using the Adreno Create website, you shouldn't need to download anything, as it should just be recognized, just included at the top as shown. Most libraries, including this one, come with several example sketches, and you should look through them and test some of their functions. However, not all of them worked right out of the kit for me, and there have been a few changes to the wire library and other components that are used in those older examples, and it causes them to fail. Also, some were less clear than others on how and why they operated in the way that they did. So I weeded through a lot of it for you. I made it my own example sketch, which I'll include a link to in the description. But here are the basics of that sketch. First, we define the libraries. Then we define the EEPROM address if you use it. For the tiny RTC board, it's OX50. Then establish a few global variables to store the time and time to stamp. I have a few functions here for repeated use. This one takes an integer and formats it into a two-digit string. You send it a single-digit integer, it adds zero to the front and sends it back as a string. Otherwise, it just sends it back as a string. Two functions to read and write from the EEPROM. The first one writes, send it the address and the data, and it formats it, writes that data to the specified location. The second reads data, send it the address, and it returns the data. It should be noted that reading and writing to the EEPROM is a tad slow. A five millisecond delay is built into here. This could be tuned, but it's good enough for most cases, and plenty good enough for an example. Get my time is the main function. It grabs the time from the RTC and adds it to the global variables established at the top. You can see that retrieving time from the RTC using this library is pretty simple. The RTC.getTime call queries the RTC. Then to parse that into separate units, you just call RTC.TimeUnit, where the unit is hour, day, etc. From here you can do whatever. I use it to assemble a timestamp, and I also save that as a global variable. Finally, setTime does just that. If you need to set the time in the RTC, call this function and pass it the current year, month, day, etc. It stops the clock, fills the data buffer, sets the time, and starts it back up. This way you can have your serial input trigger the time change or any other input or process that you want. To make all this work up in the setup block, 
Start the wire library and the wire begin if you're using the EEPROM. Then we get the current time from the clock, which isn't really necessary here, but uh, I added it anyway. There are some notes and commands to set the square wave pin. The RTC board and the chip have an output that can be blinked with a timed pulse square wave. One hertz by default. This can be enabled or disabled and configured here. And that's pretty much all that's needed for setup. If you don't use the square wave or the EEPROM, the RTC actually has no setup parameters. In the loop, we output the time and the second count, read the last counter location from the EEPROM and output that, then we increment the counter, write that to the EEPROM at the next location, and then read that value back and display it. Finally, we update the time and delay a second before doing it all again. <laughs> you know, these operations actually should be reversed, but there you go. Hopefully, that's clear and you can make use of it. I wrote it so that it could be taken and just dropped into a bigger project, which is exactly what I did. Here's how I use this in my main program. First, in libraries, the wire.h is just for the EEPROM. I don't use it currently, but I might later. So it's added, but commented out. The DS1307 new library is all that's needed for I2C communication with the RTC. I use the same three variables to track the current time. And the two-digit string, get my time, and set time are dropped directly in without any changes needed. These are primarily used by the time scheduler function. This function first calls get my time to update the variables with the current time. Then it uses the compare time function to determine if a specified duration is passed. The function is passed three values, the unit of time you're comparing, such as seconds, minutes, etc., the sample value that you want to compare, which is generally a variable that gets set in the time scheduler function, and the delta, or the difference that you want to meet or exceed. So for units equals one, which is seconds, first it checks to see if you want a change of greater than zero. And if the difference between now and the sample is not greater than zero, it returns false, as a second hasn't passed yet. Then it subtracts the sample from current time and checks to see if that value minus the change desired is greater than or equal to zero. If it is, the desired time is passed and it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Minutes, hours, and days are compared in a similar manner with some slight alterations to account for the fact that there's only 60 minutes in an hour, so a minute four may be after minute 59, or that some months have more days than others. It took me a little bit to figure out, may not be perfect, but it works. So back at the time scheduler, it uses the compare time to determine if the set durations pass. So every new second, it returns true and runs all the functions in this block, finishing by setting its comparator to the current second count which will cause return time to return false until the current second advances beyond what was just recorded. This is repeated each minute, five minutes, hourly, daily, etc. Also, the time blocks are nested, so it doesn't bother to check if a new minute's passed unless it's a new second. It only checks to see if it's a new day at the hour change, which was 24 times a day. In this way, the code can be scheduled to run at any delay duration down to a second. In the other functions, there are checks to see if the current hour is a desired one. So for example, the lights are just supposed to come on at 10 a.m. The light schedule function runs once a minute, and that function checks to see if it's a 10 a.m. or after. Using the global variable for the hour and the day that we set with a time scheduler when it calls get my time. I covered that in greater detail last episode, so I won't go over it again here. You can go back and watch that if you're interested. That should tell you enough to be dangerous. I'd love to hear any comments or suggestions you have. Drop me a line in the comments, please. And please click like and subscribe to my channel if you like what you see here. Until next time, thanks for watching.